So far, we have come a long way into understanding how to design our sounds in Poison. Up till now though, we have been dealing with static sounds. To understand what I mean, if you listen to the sounds that I've made so far, you will notice that the sound does not change much as time goes on. While this is okay in certain situations, it does limit you in a lot of ways. If you listen to any more naturally occurring sound, you will notice that it doesn't stay static. A kick drum has a sudden increase in volume that disappears nearly as quickly as it appears. Whereas a string section in an orchestra might well have the sound swell in. This sort of sonic animation is possible within synthesizers as well. The first and probably most common of these is the amplification attack decay, sustain and release controls that are not only common in subtractive synthesis but in all forms of synthesis and sampling. In the examples I just gave you, it is the volume of the sound that changes over time. The amplification envelope emulates these examples by giving you the ability to adjust the attack time. The attack time in the example of a kick drum is almost instantaneous. This is also true of natural sounds like plucked strings. Whereas an orchestra is the other way around in that it takes some time to get to its maximum volume. The next control affects how long it will take while the key is still being held down before it settles on a specific volume at which it is held or sustained. The first two controls here dealt with time factors. The third control is that of sustain and it is this control that determines the volume of the sound while the key is being held down after it has passed both the attack and decay times. The last control determines the length of time it takes for the sound to finally fade away after the key is let go. As a group, this is commonly known as an ADSR envelope. Poison has a second of these and this can be used to control any of five different parameters. The amplification envelope was just specialised in that it only works with volume. The modulation can be mapped to control cutoff and the frequency or pulse width of your A oscillator or your A and B oscillators. The last control which is labelled amount is used to determine the strength of the envelope itself. The centre point is equal to zero, so at this setting the envelope itself has no effect on the sound. Dragging the slider up or down affects the sound accordingly. If it is set negatively, then the attack time will actually see a reduction in the mapped value as opposed to an increase. You can also have sound change over time using a low frequency oscillator. Not to be confused with the noise generator oscillators, this is used to vary certain parameters over time in a cycliture manner. The LFO adds a pan control to the possible destinations. The oscillators themselves are saw, sine, triangle, pulse and random. The next part of the video will see us look into the final part of the modulation section. We will look at MIDI control, the arpeggiator and the transgate.